Oh. Man, these are good. Today, we're cooking one of Vietnam's most beloved drinking snack, tôm rang mui, which literally translates to roasted salted shrimp, although you'll find it more commonly on the Google as salt and pepper shrimp. It is a crunchy, bite-sized delight that is coated in the salty, spicy seasoning. You know, the perfect drinking companion. And because right now we all need a drink as well as a snack, Let's get to work! This recipe is surprisingly very simple to do, but requires a bit of logistics and coordination. So first task of the day, chopping anything that needs to be chopped. Mainly garlic, onions, and whatever coriander you have left. Smash, chop, and voila, put these lovely ones aside. Second step, time to mix up the spices. I'm taking out my stove because um, here's our peppercorn and we will roast it live before crushing it into little pieces. Yes, we're fancy like that. Obviously, you can also just use a teaspoon of fine ground black pepper if you prefer. Add three quarter of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of paprika, and a pinch of chili flakes, so whatever amount that suits your buccal tolerance for heat. Half a teaspoon of ginger powder, and finally, the secret to this dish, multiple layers of savory delight, chicken stock powder. This thing is actually quite salty, so I'd recommend you add only half a teaspoon to the mix. Give everyone a good ride around the bowl, and there you go, awesome seasoning complete. Now, let's look at our shrimp. For an authentic Vietnamese experience, use a medium-sized shrimp with head and tail. You'll still want to give them a little beauty treatment. Start by trimming away the sharp edges around the head. To do this, simply slide your scissors between the rostrum and the small antenna and chop. The roof of your mouth will thank you later. Then, degut the shrimps. Here are two techniques I found on the internet. For technique A, gently fold the shrimps to serve as the meat between two pieces of shell. Insert a toothpick and pull out the black digestive tract. Yeah, that's the nasty stuff you want to get out. Technique B, make a small cut along the back of the shrimp. See that black string? That's the grit you want to pull out. The second technique worked much better for me, but beware of cutting your fingers through the process. Once your shrimps are clean and sexy, pat them with a towel. Dry them as much as possible because we're about to get to the frying step. Shrimps are juicy ones, so you'll want to give the heating oil a head start to ensure optimal results. While a vegetable is warming up, add a cup of cornstarch to a container, which we will use to coat our shrimps. Make sure every single bit of the shrimp get its fair share of starch. Hmm? Nobody gets left behind. Check on the oil. If you don't see bubbles coming up the wooden chopsticks, then your oil is not ready yet. Keep yourself busy by tapping any excess starch off the shrimps. Check again on the oil. And um, oh, looks like we're ready to fry these babies. Each side requires no more than 30 seconds to a minute to get golden. Also, make sure not to overcrowd the pan, which is the reason why we're prepping the next batch as these folks are taking an oil bath. Look at this beauty! she'd be delicious as is, but I'm sure you'll agree that some fry garlic never hurt anyone. Unless you're Queen Elizabeth. But I'm diverging. Back to the name of this dish, which includes the words salted and shrimp. If we wanted to see big chunks of salt, that would make the dish way too salty. To trick the eye, we'll use some shrimp crackers. 
This is completely optional and you could also use store-bought shrimp crackers to make your life easier. However, if you decide to fry your own crackers, don't just stare at them like I do as they curl up. Stretch them out and flip them over so that they reach their full potential, which also means more crunchy area for you. A and who doesn't like more crunch? Now that we have all our ingredients ready, time to assemble! Bring back all the shrimps to the yard on a low medium heat. Sprinkle them with a few sprinkles of your spices. Also, better put less than too much because you've been warned this thing is salty. Add half of your green onions as well as your fried garlic. Give everybody a good toss and plate! Make sure to scrape out the bottom of the pan because that's where all the goodness is at. Finally, onto our fake salt. Smash one cracker into little pieces and ta-da! Fake, fake salt. Sprinkle, or in my case, strategically place the fake salt around your plate. And here we go. Hello, George. Hello, Albert. Where shall we go? Into Anne's belly. <laughs> This smells amazing! Because of the last frying, the cornstarch absorbed all of the salt, the pepper, the paprika. Oh, we can smell it. Now, let's see how crunchy it is. Oh, it's all coated beautifully. Mmm. Wow. Crunchy, spicy, salty. I mean, what more can you ask for? Mmm, and the meat is still juicy because we didn't overcook it, so there's a beautiful contrast between the crust and the inside. Mmm, I need a drink. I don't have beer, so uh, we'll go for a, a little Cabernet Sauvignon. Perfect. Probably not the most optimal wine pairing, but you know what? Sometimes you just need a drink and a salty snack. <sighs> this is it for this week's recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what kind of modifications you would have done it, what kind of personal magic touch you would have given it. So uh, yeah, on this, I'll see you next time.